Saints of O'Donovan Russa, that one among us should, in the name of all, speak the praise of that valiant man and endeavor to formulate the thought and the hope that are in us as we stand around his grave. And if there is anything that makes it fitting that I, rather than another, that I, rather than one of the gray-haired men who were young with him and who shared in his labor and in his suffering should speak here, it is perhaps that I may be taken as speaking on behalf of a new generation that has been rebaptized in the Fenian faith, that has accepted the responsibility of carrying out the Fenian program. I propose to you then that here, by the grave of this unrepentant Fenian, we renew our baptismal vows. That here, by the grave of this unconquered and unconquerable man, we ask of God, each one for himself, such unshakable purpose, such high and gallant courage, such unbreakable strength of soul as belonged to O'Donovan Rossa. Deliberately here, we avow ourselves, as he avowed himself in the dock, Irishmen of one allegiance only. We, of the Irish volunteers, and you others, who are associated with us in today's task and duty, are bound together, and must stand together henceforth in brotherly union for the achievement of the freedom of Ireland. We know only one definition of freedom. It is Mitchell's definition. It is Tone's definition. It is Ross's definition. Let no man blaspheme the cause that the dead generations of Ireland served by giving it any other name or definition than their name and their definition. We stand at Ross's grave, not in sadness, but rather in exaltation of spirit that it has been given to us to come thus into so close a communion with that brave and splendid gale. Splendid and holy causes are served by men who are themselves splendid and holy. O'Donovan Rasa was splendid in the proud manhood of him, splendid in the heroic grace of him, splendid in the Gaelic strength and clarity and truth of him. And all that pride and splendor and strength were compatible with the humility and a simplicity of devotion to Ireland, to all that was olden and beautiful and Gaelic in Ireland. The holiness and simplicity of patriotism of Michael O'Cleary or of Nolan O'Growney, the clear true eyes of this man, almost alone in his day, visioned Ireland as we of today would surely have her, not free merely, but Gaelic as well. Not Gaelic merely, but free as well. In closer spiritual communion with him now than ever before. In spiritual communion with those of his day, living and dead, who suffered with him in English prisons. In communion of spirit, too, with our own dear comrades who suffer today in English prisons. And speaking on their behalf as well as on our own, we pledge to Ireland our love and to English rule in Ireland our hate. This is a place of peace where men should speak with all charity and with all restraint. But I hold it a Christian thing, as O'Donovan Rossa held it, to hate evil, to hate untruth hate oppression, and hating them to strive to overcome them. Rulers and defenders of realms had need to be wary if they would guard against such processes. Life springs from death, and from the graves of patriot men and women spring living nations. They think that they pacified Ireland. They think that they have purchased half of us and intimidated the other half. They think that they have foreseen everything, think that they have provided against everything. But the fools, the fools, the fools, they have left us our Fenian dead. And while Ireland holds these graves, Ireland unfree shall never be at peace.